Alien Romulus. This movie was absolutely amazing. I've anticipated this movie for a while now, and I think a lot of you that are watching this video were excited about watching this movie. So I'm not gonna waste time. Without further ado, we're gonna get into our discussion in Alien Romulus and why I personally think it's the best movie to come out this year. Now, I could have been speaking too soon because there's a good bit of other movies that need to come out before the year's over with, but this movie did a lot of things well that I think tops it over anything else that's come out this year, especially with just being horror, because you know, I, I love horror, right? So first and foremost, I'm gonna start this video off getting into a lot of the non-spoiler stuff and discussing the things I loved about the movie without kind of giving you a good bit of how the plot went and things of that nature. The second part is going to be a synopsis of sorts where I'm going to allow you guys to kind of get a peek behind the curtain as to what actually happened in the film. Um, so maybe if you care about the spoilers, if you don't, it is what it is. You know what it is. Let's get into the non-spoiler portion. So off top, there's a few things that I always want to look at when it comes to a horror movie into what I think makes horror movies special. One, sound design, how the sound and the music and the score make atmosphere and make you actually feel emotion <gasps> And in this case, for the horror movie, makes you feel a lot of tension and, and fright and fear in the movie itself. This is a great job. This movie does very well what I like with a good movie to where sometimes they understand that the lack of sound is what makes things even scarier. There are moments in this film to where obviously they're playing in the as they're playing on the aspect that these characters are in space. And if you know rudimentary science, you know that there is no sound or light really in space for real. So when there are issues where or moments where characters are in space, you don't hear anything, but you do know there's still a looming threat around so you're just like oh my god what's gonna happen because you can't hear any sound cues to let you know that a xenomorph or a face hugger or anything's coming for them secondly there are moments in this film where tension is built up in an amazing fashion this is a big thing for horror movies because if you don't have tension no one's gonna be scared so you gotta have people scared so you gotta have tension this movie did that very well by playing on a lot of the things that i mentioned earlier regards to lack of sound there are moments in which characters are trying to like sneak around face huggers or or xenomorphs and they're playing into a lot of the lore as well because we'll get into simple lore for people that don't know the face huggers the little things that crawl around that jump on your face and implant xenomorphs into you they don't have any eyes to see so they go off of sensing heat essentially and hearing things that are going on around them. So they have moments in this film where they play on that, where they play on the fact that they can't see. So that makes sound that much more important in this film. And I just absolutely, mwah, I love it. I love it so much and how that was done. Getting into some of the acting performances really quickly, cause I'm kinda, I know I'm jumping around, but stay with me y'all. I'm trying to get through it without just like spilling out guts. Everybody act their damn ass off in this movie. I think I had some kind of emotion or, or thought about each character. The worst thing you can do in a horror movie or just a movie in general is produce a character that I felt nothing about. I need to either love this character, hate this character, or have some kind of feeling towards this character. The thing I don't need to be is indifferent. And none of these characters were that. I felt some kind of sorrow or joy when somebody was saved or somebody was killed off. Um, and I just absolutely loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. The next big thing, and this is probably the biggest thing in regards to an alien movie, the xenomorphs and the effects that go about them operating. The xenomorphs looked spectacular and almost some of the best that I've seen in all of the Alien franchise. There was, from what I could tell, mostly practical effects. Like a lot of the slime and the ripping of flesh and, and the way the xenomorphs in their mouth moved and the, the, the slickness of their design and things of that nature was all very practical in nature and I think a lot of it was puppetry. Again, I could be wrong if this comes out later and they the CGI a lot of it, but from my expertise and my experience watching horror movies, a lot of this looked practical and look like puppets that were just done very well. Um, a lot of the chest bursting effects, because you know it's an alien movie, you're gonna have chest bursters at some point. It looked amazing, it looked even more gruesome. I feel like in historically with the older alien movies, when they would do a chest burster scene, it felt more like the chest cavity seemed like it was more soft tissue and it just popped out. This one, in this movie, when a chest burster would come out of somebody's chest, you could like hear the crunch of them like slowly breaking through the sternum. So you hear the, the the baby xenomorph trying to like ram its head through the person's sternum and like break through that chest cavity. So it just made things very much more visceral. And when an alien came out, it made it more of an impact to me. So everything just hit. Like every time they revealed a xenomorph or a face hugger or something of that sort, it felt more impactful because they took their time to make things very much more slow and methodical and how they did reveals and things of that nature. Because at the end of the day, you know what it is. You know what a xenomorph looks like. You know what a face hugger looks like. So instead of just trying to build up the effect so that you can see what it looks like for the first time, it's kind of making you wait until you get that reveal of what you know is horror. Like the horror of knowing what's gonna happen, but not 
knowing when is a lot more scary than not knowing in my personal opinion in, in movies like this especially when it's a franchise monster like a xenomorph that you've seen it do it all at this point you know what's, what's going on with it and this movie did a good job of that even further with the xenomorph another thing that they did really well that i love in horror movies in general when they do this when it comes to like a monster flick is that they didn't ever really show the xenomorph in its full glory like you saw its whole body at some point but most of the body was either like shots of his chest up or like waist down or if you did see it in this full it was like shrouded in darkness so it felt more like a threat even when like a lot of them were killed off at some point through whatever means it didn't feel like they were just fodder it still felt like they were really they had a lot of impact because they were shrouded in darkness and it was a lot of them coming at you at one time uh that's my best thing i loved about this i think that in prior movies like alien versus predator there were issues with that the where i feel like the xenomorphs lost a little bit of their threat because you just got used to killing them and you saw them in like bright lights and kind of just there was no 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 sense of a lure there or attention there when you saw them so in this movie the way they looked from the practical effect the way they lit them the way they did the sound design for them the way they operated and how how visceral a lot of the effects were when they were created everything was amazing with that picasso the cinematography is something that i cannot overlook for a movie that traditionally is very dark and gloomy and gritty there were moments of like beauty in it there were a lot of like shots of space which obviously were lots like, were, were cg'd in but the rendering on those and how the computer made those look like there's a shot into which the characters are leaving a planet for the first time and it's been made apparent that some of these characters have never seen the sun. So that first reveal of the sun and seeing their reactions and seeing how beautiful it looked, it was, oh my God, like it, I know it sounds like I'm rambling in a lot of instances with this video, but I want you guys to know that this movie did a lot of things right in regards to the visuals. I, at all times, was either captivated with how things looked from the beauty aspect, like I mentioned with, the, with seeing space and seeing the sun and seeing uh, 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 things like a, a asteroid field or, or a ring around a moon. Like a lot of this stuff, I couldn't tell exactly what it was unless they stated out exactly what it was. But when I did see it, I didn't even know what it was for me to acknowledge how dope it looked. That's, that's what I'm trying to get across. It looked dope. The movie looked dope. Long story short, it looked dope. Lastly, I wanna get into the pacing of this movie because this movie is two hours long for people that don't know. Although it is two hours long or to be exact an hour and 59 minutes, it did not feel like it was dragging on at any point in this movie. I feel like this movie had a proper pacing. Um, and maybe at the end it had some moments to where you thought it was over with, but it hit the last little like death gasp that some horror movies have when it comes to a monster flick. But it felt like it was warranted and it felt like it needed to be there. And it was also something that they set up earlier. So even when things were over with, you still kind of knew more was to come because you saw the foreshadowing of it very early on in the movie. Uh, but the pacing all around was amazing. I think what was even more impressive with a horror movie, especially what a lot of people are used to nowadays, people with some, I feel, I feel like a lot of people are used to like bigger body counts in some horror movies. And the fact that this movie only had six main characters and I'm not gonna say how many of them died, but for a significant portion of them to die, you were very much so not left feeling like there's huge gaps of deaths in between things happening. I feel like they used all six people to get through this entire movie and had the death rates go pretty consistently throughout it. And each death served as a way to push the plot forward. So no death was wasted in this. Each death either served as a way to further the plot or explanation of how the Xenomorphs work. It was like a tad bit of an exposition dump, but it felt warranted because as you were getting the exposition, it's as to assist with the current situation going on. So it felt like you needed to get that dump to kind of figure out what was going on there. Um, and if you weren't getting like an exposition, exposition dump to kind of figure out what's going on in this situation, it was to gain the death characterized characters more in regards to how important certain characters were to other people or it even flushed out more relationships there's a moment in the movie to where i would just give it away there's a character who's pregnant and they don't really tell you who the father is of the the baby of this character but through an interaction and a person's death later on it kind of lets you know like oh he's the dad that's nice to know and they gave that information off without you having without them having to say a single word or say the words oh luke i'm your father it, it, it was just done amazingly the writing for it was amazing and a lot of characters were fleshed out in an amazing way. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have in regards to the spoiler free stuff and the elements that I could talk about. Let's get into the spoiler stuff in a little bit of a plot synopsis. So first and foremost, I wanna speak on the lead actor
actor and actress for this film. Uh, Kaylee Spaney and David Johnson, they played the character of Andy and Rain Carradine. These two were amazing and obviously did their job excellently well for them to stand out to me this much. Kaylee, I need to speak on first and foremost because obviously she is the Sigourney Weaver of this film. She's the Ellen Ripley that you're seeing a lot um, throughout this film where she is this strong woman who is taking on these xenomorphs and, and, and trying her best to save everybody on board. Initially, she's kind of meek and, and, and timid in how she operates where she just wants to get the job done so she can dip and go home. But when she's backed into a corner, she steps up to a challenge in regards to how she deals with all this stuff. Um, and David Johnson did amazing. And the reason I have to call him the best actor and the lead in this film to me and how well the performance went, he essentially played two characters in this film. He is a android that was defective initially. So the way the plot goes essentially is that Rain's father found Andy in some kind of dumpster pile at some point and reprogrammed him with the prime directive of protecting Rain throughout the movie. Rain then essentially takes him on as essentially being her brother. Like she sees him as her legit blood brother and treats him as such. Like she doesn't leave him behind and she treats him with respect. Even though we're in a world where people see androids and synthetic people as not people at all and they kind of treat them like toys or tools, she sees him as a legit brother and I, I find that endearing. But the best thing about him that I enjoy is the fact that initially as he's defective and he's not having like full motor control over things and, 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 and he's just speaking in a certain manner that almost is very reminiscent to him having some kind of uh, mental health disability. He plays that character very well. And you see this like 180 switch because you get into the film where you're moving further on where they find this older broken android who was pretty much like destroyed at this point. They take his like memory bank or his, his brain chip that has his uh, mission directives on it and they insert that into Andy's brain, you then see it kind of repair Andy and kind of make him more of this cold android. And for him to play these two distinct androids differently was amazing to me. He, he's, he's the same character, but he's two different people and he's very cold. And I love that when he's playing this distinct character, it's also very distinct and alert into how other characters are interacting with him because he's affecting everything going on at this moment in time. So to get us get into the overall synopsis, I know you guys have been waiting on this and how this movie plays out. Essentially, there are six characters in this film who are, they're, they're mining in a mining town. They're poor, they don't really have much going for them except for working in the mine until they die. And they're trying to get to this other planet that I can't remember quite the name of. I'm gonna call this like Earth Prime for lack of a better term, where it is said that this planet is essentially Earth. There's sunshine, rainbows, unicorns flying around. It's the best part of what a human should be in regards to where they should live. Versus the planet they're on, which is a mining planet, um, that was colonized and there's no sunshine. The clouds and the storms are covering the planet up. So these people are seeing nothing but darkness and depression their entire lives. These people find through scanning that there is a ship that's just decommissioned floating above the atmosphere of the planet. And they find out through scanning that there are a total of six cryopods that are on the ship. And these cryopods are going to be what they need in order to make the adventure into the next Earth Prime planet. Because of Earth Prime, the distance between Earth Prime and the planet they're in now is nine years. So obviously they don't want to be traveling in space for nine years for whatever reason. So they need to find these cryo chambers where they can go into stasis for nine years and then arrive there um, at, their, at their current state. So their job is to get into that ship get those cryopods and then get to this Earth Prime planet where they can live out happier, better lives. But in order to get into the ship, they then need Andy to open the ship up because he is a android built by the same company that built that outpost. So he should have permissions in order to open doors and, and get in there and get what they need. So they need Rain to bring Andy along so they can get everything they need and then they're gonna dip out. What they find out as time goes on is that on that Earth Prime planet, they know that apparently androids are not needed there and they're kind of like frowned upon. So any androids that get there are pretty much decommissioned. So they don't tell Rain or Rain doesn't tell Andy that once they get to that new planet, they're pretty much gonna have to destroy him and she's gonna have to go on without him, which for her and him is kind of sad to see because she is kind of reluctant to do so as she sees him as her brother, but he is very much so like kind of sad to it, which is interesting because he's supposed to be an android and he initially looks sad with it, but he just accepts the fate because his prime directive is to do what's in the best interest for Rain. Um, as they go along the ship, they are kind of encountering this moment into which they find the cryopods, but there isn't enough juice or enough fuel in them to make it to the nine years. They only have enough fuel for three years. So they 
eject those cryopods into the ship that they're on to kind of get them and then they go further into the ship to find these cryo fuel tanks that they can put inside of the cryostasis chambers in order to fuel it to get to the nine years where they need to go but while they're in there they essentially like decompress the room and throw it around into which that the room temperature begins to rise um because i guess the cryo the cryostasis pods that they had inserted were keeping that room's temperatures regulated so upon the removing them they heat up the room and there are a bunch of face hugger eggs that are like scientifically like dry sealed into the wall. And because it's warming up, they're waking up. And because they're waking up, they're hopping out and they're trying to suck some face, hug some face and insert them babies inside of that stomach. So they are essentially trapped in the room and they're getting attacked by the face huggers and things of that nature. And just to get more context on who's on the ship, obviously Andy is on the ship because he's a droid that had to get them on. Tyler is there because he's like the, the man leading everything and leading the charge for it. And then they take Bjorn there as well. So those, the three men are essentially the ones on the ship trying to get the cryostasis chambers. Uh, because they're stuck in that room um, and they're trying to get out and they're not aware the face hookers are there off rip. But once they arrive and that they're in, and they find out that it's not safe to be in that room, Rain and Navarro then jump out of the ship to go get them out so they can get everything out and just go at, at, at that. Um, so essentially, they take the chip from the robot that I mentioned earlier that was there uh, previously, and they take his chip and they implant it inside of Andy. And once the chip is inside of Andy, he will have then like executive permissions in order to open up certain doors that he wasn't able to open up before. As soon as they're able to slip out of the room, one face hugger makes it through and gets a good big strong hug on Navarro's face, which for a lot of us that know how this goes, we know she's cool. As the face hugger's just pumping that 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 baby into her chest into her stomach, we then get the again the exposition dump from the robot that was there before the scientist rooks who which i'm not aware i can't remember if he was there from what a previous movie or if he's an original character again y'all i'm sorry it's been a while since i watched the last alien movie i should have been catching up up until this release but i did he then kind of informs them of how this is going to go with the fact that if you remove the face hugger try to remove it off of her it'll continue to squeeze and break your neck and she dies or if you get it off, there's a 60 to 40 chance that she's already been impregnated by the alien. So she's still going to die in general. And they do this thing um, in regards to the interaction between Andy and the scientist robot that I found very interesting in which these two robots are having a conversation. Well, he lets him know that humans are very emotional and they take a long time to come to the conclusion that we already know from the jump, which essentially is that is a 60, 40 chance that she was impregnated. And if she's impregnated, she has to die before she can give birth to another xenomorph. Because if she does, everybody is screwed on that ship um because everybody was gonna be screwed on that ship he then instructs david with the job of killing navarro because they're trying to kill her um so that she can't produce his chest burster and she happens to get away with being on onto the ship that they were on and they pretty much like decommissioned and released from the ship kind of leaving tyler and rain and andy behind for the time being um just until they can get andy to chill out and not try to kill navarro anymore but the big mistake in that happening was that the chest burster came bursting And like I mentioned earlier in the video, when a car regards to like how visceral this was, this moment of the movie was just so great to me to finally see that chest burster come out. But as it was coming out, it had Navarro kick and knock the ship off course, spiraling it into like some other, like the other opposite end of the ship and allowing the Xenomorph to kind of come out and grow and kick off the whole movie where the Xenomorphs are on a hunt for the main cast. Now you have this whole chase going around to where these people are trying to get to the other side of the ship. Um, but the interesting thing is you're assuming that that Andy is like now trying to get them to the other side of the ship to just escape uh, because you think he still has this prime directive or at least the other characters do but you find out that Andy has this new directive from getting the old ship from the, uh, the scientist now implanted in him where he has to do what is in the best interest of the company and apparently we find out that the best interest of the company was them getting this research that they were creating so the whole big synopsis undercover story about this movie is that this ship that they're on or this uh, orbital station its whole job was to build the ultimate human being because they realized that human beings were not meant to colonize other planets and the planets that they were on people were dying through disease through famine through all these other things because they didn't have what they needed so the scientists were trying to build like the ultimate human being in regards to them not needing to do any of that and being able to colonize any planet and not needing all these resources and it's being squishy and soft and how they how they operate so 
they decided to take in a xenomorph and take its DNA and splice it and try to combine it perfectly with human DNA to where it melds into this super being. The interesting thing that happens here is that they get that research and the main director for Andy is to deliver that research to the lab on the planet so they can continue to develop that super being, that super xenomorph human hybrid. Um, and you see them dip off with that research and try to get uh, back to the ship with it and, and, and get it back down. But before they dip out and you, you see them leave the room, you find out that there's like a test rat in one of the scenes where you see him take the formula and he went from like having broken bones and dying essentially to snapping back to reality and just being being regular like a regular rat but when they cut away and they come back to it you see it give birth to something like a super xenomorph for lack of a better term um and you don't see what that looks like initially you see like the result of it being exploded out which was like this big amalgamation of like monster for lack of a better term um so you understand that it's going to be it's going to be some freaky stuff going on because they have this stuff you kind of get the idea that it's going to be this big super monster at the end of the movie that you're gonna have to deal with so the fast forward through it as they're heading back towards the ship they're dealing with all the xenomorph issues and all the face hooker issues but they make it to a point to where they rain gives the form formula to k the sister of tyler and k's task with getting the formula to the ship and then getting that formula back to that back to the planet back to the research station so she can get help because at this point she's being attacked by xenomorphs he's bleeding out and she has his baby on the way she then does something incredibly stupid by injecting herself with the experimental formula you stupid bitch you filthy slut i guess in hopes to save herself because she was bleeding out and losing a lot of blood and she didn't want to die and lose the baby or either one or both um um, but in her doing that stupid, stupid thing, she's kicked off and started a timer for the like super ending or the epilogue of the film. I want to say the climax, but like the epilogue of it, where after all, after all the rest of the fighting that Rain and Andy go through to get to the ship and finish everything off, because at the end of the movie, because the only people that really make it at the end of the movie are Rain, Kay, and Andy. Everybody else is getting killed off to some extent by all the others you know more. You think it's a happy day. You think it's all oh, hurrah, we survived. We're gonna be on the way there. We have the crisis fuel now to get in, this, in the get in the chambers and then make it to the planet you then find out what it looks like when that super experimental formula they were using looks like when it's tested on an actual person in particular a person with the baby you essentially see k go into like this expedited labor where she gives birth to this like bulbous like shell essentially if you watch dragon ball z and you know what cell looked like when he was in that shell essentially in the show that's what it looks like it's like this cocoon nutshell and there's a baby inside which initially i'm like okay maybe we get lucky and it's just like a regular cute cuddly baby that just happens to be in this like acid filled shell nah bruh we get introduced to the first time in my knowledge seeing a human xenomorph hybrid and i was kind of taken aback by him initially because he seemed to be mostly cgi um again if i'm wrong about that y'all let me know in the comments below or maybe this comes out later on when somebody corrects me but it seemed like he was mostly computer generated and he lacked the same amount of like intimidation that the regular xenomorphs did um so th I, this probably is the weakest part of the film to me is the epilogue as far as them wrapping this up but all in all i did enjoy seeing that concept finally come to life because it's something that they set up at the very beginning and paid off again that's something that movie does very well in regards to setting up scenes setting up deaths and setting up moments early in the movie and paying all of them off by the end it was done incredibly well so all in all as you guys can expect the xenomorph human hybrid is defeated by getting shipped off into space and dies from just blowing up in space and rain is able to get back on the ship though in her coordinates for the prime planet and she essentially takes off and that's the movie again it was done very well i really enjoyed the movie very much so i low-key want to go back and see it like two more times uh because I, I really enjoyed this movie this movie was done incredibly well i needed this so bad there are some solid movies this year like deadpool and wolverine was a solid movie but this was like a classic guy like if you want to teach somebody how to make a movie not just a horror movie but how to make a movie where you have setups and payoffs impeccable sound design impeccable acting like this is one of those movies this is a standard of how horror and cinema should be in my opinion i love this movie again if you guys feel differently let me know in the comments below i find it hard for a lot of you to feel differently but this was probably my favorite movie of the year. I think this was movie of the year and hope that this movie gets a lot of Oscars and these actors get awards going forward because I think this movie deserves it. Um, and I, again, I hope horror gets more respect. I've talked about this before in past videos that I feel like horror 
doesn't get is just due in a lot of instances. People love to watch it and people understand the importance of it in regards to how it helped develop the cinema land feel going forward. But when you get into like award shows like the Oscars, I feel like that's when it gets shafted and these horror movies don't get the respect they deserve as far as these awards and these recognitions from the Academy in the highest regard. But I digress. All in all, even if they don't get these awards, they don't get any award. I will give this movie a platinum katana from the dojo. I give them that award. You get the platinum katana. Uh, this is done very well and I, I, I hope a lot more you guys check this film out. I highly recommend it. Go see it in theaters. Don't wait for it to get to streaming. Don't bootleg it. Go spend the bread. Go take your family. Go take your girlfriend, your baby, your child, your auntie, your cousin's baby mama. Take her out. Go see this movie. Y'all spend bread. Y'all go see this movie. Support this movie. And again, this has been Captain Diesel, Captain Diesel's Dojo. And I want to thank you guys for any support you guys have given me thus far in the channel. Um, it's been a great, great month for me. The, the channel subscription count is almost doubled. So a lot of you watching this, I hope that you guys are returning subscribers and that you guys are enjoying the content I'm continuing to give you guys. If you are a new viewer, this is the kind of stuff you can expect from me. The video won't be as like erratic, I guess, um, as, as this one was, because I was just super excited after watching this. And this is like my fresh review and fresh thought on it. Um, but yeah, you can see a lot more videos from me in the channel. And going forward, guys, big announcement. If you guys aren't aware, I've officially created and started my own Discord server. So if you guys want to hang out with me and kind of help me build this community going forward and make this thing a big movement where cool people meet up in a Discord server and do cool things. I'm going to be hosting things like watch parties. We're going to be discussing stuff like comics, games, anime, movies, and things of that nature. And if you guys want to discuss more about how you felt about this movie, we can do it in there. Um, I'm, I'm really want to cultivate this community, guys, and I really want you guys to help me uh, just build a place where people of all shapes, sizes, and colors, and in creeds can come together and just have fun about nerdy stuff and just be a community. Again, if you guys want to be a part of that, the link will be in the description below along with my other social media links. Um, but again, I thank you guys for any support, even if you don't want to be a part of that. Just watching this video to this far is, is, is more than I can do. So thank you. This has been Captain Diesel with Captain Diesel's Dojo, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.